Now we're gonna dust off a new segment. Um, a, it's gonna be called dusting it off. We're gonna premiere premiere one. Uh, we're gonna premiere the new segment. It's gonna be called um, "What Are the Odds?" Uh, B Scott, uh, you know, named it right before we started recording here. I, I do like it very much. And basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you. Uh, two Colts season totals uh, based on DraftKings projections, and you tell me which bet you're going to take. So um, we're going to go. The first question will be uh, either you will take Matt Ryan over 25.5 passing touchdowns, which is at plus 100 right now on DraftKings, not in that, uh, Jonathan Taylor uh, or Jonathan Taylor under 1,450 and a half rushing yards, which is minus 120. And the bet I'm taking is Jonathan Taylor under 1,450 yards on the season. I think both bets could hit. I think both Jonathan Taylor could run over 1,450 yards. Um, I think Matt Ryan, I'm, I'm pretty confident in Matt Ryan throwing for um, over 25 and a half passing touchdowns. Uh, since 2010, Matt Ryan has not failed to throw uh, 25 plus touchdowns in back to back seasons. Um, he had 20 last season. Uh, he has only failed to reach that mark three times over that span as well. Um, of course, we all know about JT's incredible season last year, but as a rookie, he started 13 games, played in 15, missed a game on the COVID list. Um, and during that, uh, you know, so during that time, he had 201 rushing yards, or he had 201 rushes for a. a 1,057 yards in the games that he started. So over 17 games, he would have just had 1,382 yards. So uh, over the last 10 seasons, only one running back has run for over 1,400 yards in back-to-back seasons. Uh, that's Derrick Henry in 2019-2020. So I think both bets are – it's tough to choose between the two bets, um, but I'm going to bet that Jonathan Taylor does not get to 1,400 yards. He's going to have a good season – or at least we hope he's going to have a good season, uh, but I just don't think it's going to be maybe necessarily the season um, as good as it could be over 1,400. All right, so look, both of these, the odds aren't great. Like, I'm not going to make any money on any of, either one of them. That makes sense. But if I, if I'm, on a $1 if I'm gonna bet, money, you'll make 89 cents. <laughs> or... If I'm going to be able to put a bet on any of them, I'm putting the bet on uh, Matt Ryan – over 25 and a half touchdowns thrown. Look, they're going to have to end up signing another wide receiver. At some point, it's going to happen. Um, also, I do expect Paris Campbell to have a healthy campaign and be a big factor. Michael Pittman will be a big factor as well. Um, I like the odds. I mean, all he has to do is get 26. 26 touchdowns. And you're good. Um, I mean, yes, if he's going to hit the 26 mark for touchdowns thrown, most likely Jonathan Taylor won't get that many yards rushing. He'll yeah. be, be under the 1450 mark. But I would rather place my odds where um, I can make something. And I, I feel like it's more of a given. I would rather win money on, on uh, Matt Ryan throwing over 25 and a half touchdowns than win money on Jonathan Taylor not rushing for over 1,400 yards. Because yeah, if I... Jonathan, if if neither one of them hits, you know, it's a bad season. I'd rather, you know, I don't know if I'm explaining that properly, but um, – I don't like the fact that the odds are minus the odds for yeah, Jonathan the, Taylor. That just the odds aren't great for any of these as far as like you're not gonna make big money, but for whatever reason yeah. the Colts the Colts like DraftKings like page like isn't like there's some things that I thought would be on there that are just aren't. Like I I thought there would be like projections for like I mean, maybe not every player, but like at least more than just like it's like Michael Pittman, uh Alec Pierce Matt Ryan, Jonathan Taylor, and then Stephon Gilmore and Yannick and Gakwe. Like I even wanted to do one with Darius, or sorry, Shaq uh, Leonard. Um, and well, what, I, what I'm saying is, I, I don't like the fact that the odds are against or in favor of Jonathan Taylor not rushing for over 1,400 yards. Yeah, That's but like I I'm said, saying. I mean, it, it doesn't. It um, it's not not it. 
it doesn't happen like in back to back years a lot of times. Like the only time it happened was like uh like I said, Derrick Henry in twenty nineteen and twenty twenty. Um because there were seasons where, you know, the leading rusher that year had like seventeen hundred yards and the next year he only had like eleven hundred right. or over a thousand. So I guess that, that makes sense, yeah. But uh, I I'm gonna I'm taking Matt Ryan for over the twenty five and a half touchdown passes. Now you said the Colts are primed to at some point get another wide receiver. In the meantime, you know the receivers that they've got. How are they going to perform? The next question is Alec Pierce over four and a half receiving touchdowns, which is plus one hundred, or under four and a half receiving touchdowns, which is minus one thirty. I'm going to go with the under. Uh, I'm going to continue to be a pessimist, uh, but it's another bet I can see going either way. The Colts haven't had. Um, a rookie receiver with more than five touchdowns since T.Y. in 2012. That was with seven. Andrew Luck was the quarterback that season. He was 10th in QBR. Matt Ryan was 22nd in QBR last season, which obviously less, you know, far less talent around him. Um, so while I think Ryan is the best quarterback the Colts have had since Luck, uh, he's not nearly the quality that Luck was in T.Y.'s rookie season. Um, now, you can make the argument in favor of five-plus touchdowns in the sense that he'll get solid targets. He's a wide receiver, too, behind Pittman. And that the Colts had multiple is he, receivers. Is he, though? I think so. Is he wide receiver, yeah. too? Not Paris Campbell? No, I don't think so. I, don't, I, think I would think Paris Campbell would be wide receiver, too. I gotcha. But regardless, um, and that, you know, multiple Colts have had um, five or more touchdowns, uh, you know, in three of the last five seasons. But I'm still going to stick with the contrarian factor. Yeah, I agree. I'm going with the under on this as well. I mean, three or four is pretty good because he's still acclimating to the game. We didn't see exactly a, a lot out of him in the preseason games, but I don't know if that was by design or what. Um, and look, I'm also going off of the factor. I believe that Paris Campbell is going to have a healthy season. And if that's the case, that's going to take away some touchdown opportunities for Alec Pierce. Michael Pittman's going to get his. Paris Campbell's going to get his. Moali Cox is going to get his. And now you're also throwing in Naheem Hines as a receiver as well, um, who's going to get his opportunities. Jonathan Taylor's going to get his opportunities. There's just a lot of opportunities to go around. Um, so if if we can get four touchdowns out of Alec Pierce, that's going to be a great. That's good. That's great. Um, really, for me, what's really going to matter with Alec Pierce is how is he doing between the goal lines? As well, getting a, is he helping get us in those positions to get those touchdowns uh, rather than drive stalling out and having to settle for punts or field goals or anything like that? So I am going to go with the under, but that's just because I believe Paris Campbell is going to have a healthy season and is going to take away from some of those opportunities that Alec Pierce may have to get over that four and a half touchdown mark. The final question is, uh, is this is, I think... I think the toughest one – well, maybe not the toughest one. I don't know. You you tell me. It's Yannick Ngakwe under 7.75 sacks, which is minus 110. Again, these are not great odds for either as far as, like, if you're trying to make money. Or Stephon Gilmore over 2.5 interceptions, minus 120. I'm going to go Gilmore over 2.5 interceptions. This is just being smart with your money because Ngakwe has had eight or more sacks in every yeah. season of his career, including – now he's playing 10. alongside, like, some – legit players on a D-line. Right. So, I mean, it's, uh, you know, and he had 10 last season, uh, and he's under the same defensive coordinator and on a comparable, if not better, defensive line. Gilmore won Defensive Player of the Year in, in 2019 when he had six interceptions. He played in eight games last season, uh, started three and still had two picks. Um, so that looks promising. Um, and 2019, uh, 2019 was the only – time in the last five years that Gilmore had three interceptions or more, but I, I still think that I'll take Ngakwe not I'll take that over Ngakwe not getting eight sacks. Like, I, I think that, I mean, there is going to come a year um, where Ngakwe doesn't get you know, eight, like watch this season he'll get seven yeah. <laughs> or something like that, but I'm it's one of those things where I'm just going to keep picking it until it doesn't happen. I'm going to just keep thinking it's going to happen. Yeah, I'm going with uh, Stephon Gilmore with over um, two and a half interceptions as well. Look, the reason his numbers recently, I feel like have not been as high on the interception totals. Guess what? Sometimes when you are the team's number one corner, quarterbacks aren't throwing your way. I mean, that that's just the nature of the beast. Well, now he's in a secondary that's, you know, he's playing alongside Kenny Moore, who's a ball hawk in his own. 
I mean, so quarter, quarterbacks are going to have to choose. Do I target the wide receiver that's paired with Stephon Gilmore or the one that's with Kenny Moore? Um, you know, it's going to be a tough choice. I feel like there's going to be more opportunities for Stephon Gilmore to hit that three interception mark. Um, I could see him having more, but I'm, I'm going to take the over on the two and a half for Stephon Gilmore. I just feel like this defense is going to help create more opportunities for him to get those picks. 